McDonald's Big Mac, the great big sandwich with a great big taste. You deserve a break today at McDonald's, where your dollar gets a break every day. Fast food has a negative impact on our health in the United States. This type of quick and cheap food has increased the rates of obesity and diabetes. According to CDC, the Center for Disease Control, this map shows the percentage of people in each state who were obese in the year 1985. But over the course of only 25 years, this has changed drastically. The revolution of fast food began in 1921 in Wichita, Kansas with the first White Castle. Although the White Castle restaurants were the official start of the fast food revolution, fast food wasn't popular until 1948 when Richard and Maurice McDonald opened the first McDonald's in San Bernardino, California. McDonald's started out as a small hometown restaurant with a simple menu of nine items. There were no tables and people ate in their cars. By 2011, McDonald's had 30,000 restaurants worldwide, a menu of over 160 items, a drive through outdoor eating, and play centers. Another revolution to fast food is how fast it is. The average time to get your meal in a drive through as of 2004, is 2 minutes and 36 seconds. And some McDonald's franchises are still trying to top that. The third important revolution to fast food is the price. Fast food provides very cheap food. Before fast food, people paid a lot more at local restaurants and at home to eat. The average cost to feed one person for dinner at a fast food restaurant is about $6, whereas the average cost at a local restaurant is anywhere between $12 and $37, depending on the state and whether it is in a rural or urban area. This form of cheap food lures people into buying it even though it's unhealthy. A big reaction to fast food was the increased rates in obesity and diabetes in the U.S. By 2010, every state in America had an obesity rate of 20% or higher. This means that one out of every five people in every state in the U.S. is obese. Now this may not sound bad, but the technical definition of obesity is when someone's body mass index is over 30. The body mass index, or BMI, is a single number that evaluates an individual's weight in relation to their height. For example, if you were 140 pounds and were 5 foot 6, you would be considered healthy. But if you were 140 pounds and 4 foot 6, you would be considered obese. How much of this do you think is caused by fast food? Obesity? Mm -hmm. um, it certainly plays a role. It's not the only cause of obesity, but it's high fat food with less nutrition and often oversized portions, so people tend to eat more than they need, and it's a contributing factor. In your opinion, is fast food always unhealthy to eat? Um, I think anything in moderation is a consideration, but are there redeeming factors to fast food? Uh, I certainly eat french fries occasionally, <laughs> and I enjoy them, but I probably have french fries once a month as opposed to once a day. So nutritionally, fast food has a lot of fat, a lot of salt, um, it increases your cholesterol, and usually your bad cholesterol. Um, and it tends to be in large portions, so people eat more than they need. Um, nutritionally, it's processed food, and that means it has less micronutrients, it's not as healthy for an individual. So, pretty much across the board, fast food is bad for you. There have been parodies, documentaries, and other forms of satire that act as not-so-subtle protests to the fast food industry. A very interesting reaction is people becoming obsessive, compulsive, or dangerous over fast food. One example is Melody Duchesne of Toledo, Ohio, a woman who attacked a McDonald's employee 
because she was denied her Chicken McNuggets at 6.30 in the morning. These kinds of incidents are very strange and suggest that there may be a creation of chemical dependency on fast food. This theory was examined in the documentary film Super Size Me as well as in magazine articles. The Scripps Research Institute, where Professor Paul J. Kenny and graduate student Paul M. Johnson demonstrated the findings of their research on addictive food. Their research has shown that the same molecular mechanisms that drive people into drug addiction is behind the compulsion to overeat, pushing people into obesity. Kenny said that the study, which took nearly three years to complete, confirms the addictive properties of junk food. In addition, the fast food industry has reacted to increased scrutiny and the public's demands. Once the fast food industries realized how angry people were over the unhealthiness of their products, they began including nutrition and calorie labels on all of their food items by the end of 2006. Do you think having nutrition facts and our calories labeled on fast food items, like at restaurants or store, help reduce obesity or diabetes? Um, I don't know that people read it. I think it can be helpful. But do you know what your diet, what, how many calories you should get a day? Somewhere below 2,000. That's right. And a lot of people don't know that. So when they see that their you know, burger might have 1,500 calories, they don't realize necessarily that that's three quarters of the calories that they should be getting during the day. So it's fine to have the numbers there, but people have to care to read it. Another event that triggered this sudden reform to health was a 2003 lawsuit against the McDonald's company. Two teenage girls, Jasmine Bradley and Ashley Pellman, sued McDonald's for their obesity. They stated that they ate at McDonald's regularly, and because they were unaware of the nutrition facts about the food they were eating, they became obese. This lawsuit was eventually dismissed, but it was the first case ever against a fast food chain to go to a U.S. courtroom. Much of the fast food industry took note and reformed. Companies like McDonald's, Burger King, and Jack in the Box now display nutrition facts and avoid further lawsuits by doing so. Another reform that other people are taking into their hands is trying healthier fast food chains. For example, there is a fast food chain restaurant called Panera Bread that has 1,230 locations in the United States and Canada. Panera Bread has a very large variety of healthy choices on their menu, which has helped rank it the number one healthiest fast food restaurant in the U.S., according to Health.com and CBS News. If this is where you grow up. If this is where you spend your Saturdays. If this is where you bond as a family. How long will you continue to eat there?